episode five of the Algorithm Podcast. Episode five. Episode five. We got a banger today. A very serious, serious episode. Serious, yeah. Not a banger, though. We got to get serious, so. Last week was a, a fun one, but yeah. as per the Algorithm Podcast, yes, We're gonna uh, the it next down. several episodes would be very serious. Today, we're talking about none other than the Delphi murders. New uh, developments in the Delphi murders. Some crazy stuff, too. Um, But before we get into this, make sure you're following the Spotify. Yes, sir. Subscribe to the YouTube. Yes, sir. Follow on the Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. All up. All up. Shout out, Toddy, for the Spotify. Yeah. (laughs) And the canon photos. Yeah, ten we love those in the group message. Yeah, and the canon photo as he's snapping one. <laughs> All right. The Delphi murders happened in a town kind of what we talk about, it was like it's like an hour from us, right? Yeah, probably like in between an hour and fifteen, hour and thirty minutes. In this case went like I national. Like, I think it's probably what, like a little north of Lafayette, I think. Is yeah. Right. Yeah, like Maybe. an hour away, hourish away. So a town of three thousand people. So we kind of uh, compare it to like Jonesboro. Yeah, right? very small, very small. Hour and seventeen. Out of boy Jamie, appreciate it. <laughs> 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 yeah, so it's like two. Imagine a town like Jonesboro, and two fourteen-year-old girls just get slain. Yeah, and it's very very bad. Uh, you know, we did have a case like this, but it was quickly solved, which yes. I think we're going to cover mm-hmm. later on, so I'm not going to talk much about it. Yes, yes, but absolutely. It does hit close to home. I was thinking about that earlier. That's what kind of... go over that case. It's kind of what makes this one a little bit weird, and still, you know, some of the new developing things, are they get a little out there, so we're going to tap into that stuff, but... There's... <sighs> tap in. Well, tap in Tiff. Tap in Tiffany for the win. <laughs> I can't wait till we get the hats made. <laughs> they don't know about the hats yet, but. Tap in Tiffany. T I T. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. So, as per every episode, we we kind of go off to go off like a little script, yes. and then we talk about the script. We're just going to tell you guys everything about what happened early on and leading up into the new developments. Okay. At 1.35 p.m. on February 13th, 2017, 13-year-old Abby Williams and 14-year-old Liberty German were dropped off by German's older sister, Kelsey German, on County Road 300 North, east of the Hoosier Heartland Highway. The girls were hiking on the Monon High Bridge over Deer Creek among Woodland and remote Deer Creek Township. At 2.07 p.m., German posted a photo of Williams walking the bridge. After this, they were not never heard from again. They were reported missing at 5.30 p.m. after they had failed to meet German's father at 3.15 p.m. The families initially searched for the girls themselves before calling the police. Authorities who quickly searched the area did not initially suspect foul play in the disappearance. However, this changed when the bodies of the girls were found around noon the next day, about a half a mile east of the abandoned Monon High Bridge. The bodies were found on the north bank of Deer Creek. Okay, so they had like 300, I think I remember hearing it was like 300 people searching for them. Yeah. In a town of three, more, yeah. yeah, in a town of 3,000 people. Small so, towns come together for stuff like yeah, this. Yeah, I think that's what the fire department, that that was registered searchers. That wasn't people yeah, that just was, going yeah, out yeah. searching. Yeah. Police have not released any details of how the girls were murdered. As early as February 15th, 2017, Indiana State Police began circulating a still image of an individual reportedly seen on the Monon High Bridge Trail, near where the two friends were slain. The grainy photograph appears to capture a Caucasian male, hands in pockets, head down, walking on a rail bridge towards the girls. A few days later, the person in the photograph was named the prime suspect in the double homicide. On February 22nd, law enforcement released an audio recording during which the voice of the suspect, although muffled, is heard to say down the hill. At this news conference, officials credited the source of the audio and imagery to German's smartphone and further regarded her as the hero for having had the presence of mind and fortitude to secretly record the exchange. Police indicated that additional evidence from the phone had been secured but would not release further details, so as not to compromise any future trial, end quote. 
by this time, the reward offered in the case was set at $41,000. So, uh, it was Libby's phone, wasn't it? I believe so. I think it was Libby's phone. So, at the time when this when the photo was released and the audio was le- released, Pete, they didn't tell everybody that it was from her phone. Everybody was pretty much assuming that there were like trail cams. Yeah. So yeah. they were just waiting for more footage from the trail cams to see who this guy was. Well, it come out that it's actually from her phone. Which is like crazy to me because, you know, if you've ever been in any like dangerous situation or you've had a moment where, you know, your um, senses are heightened, um, for a little kid to think that's the first thing I should do is start recording. It's just crazy to me because there's been times where, you know, you're in those situations and you almost think to yourself like, man, I wish I would have done this in that moment. And to think that she just instantly thought of that because they, they probably knew they were in danger right off the bat. So, yeah. I mean, really, really give her that hero la- uh, label is. Did they precise. find her phone near her body or was it hidden somewhere found? I think they pinged it. Like I think they pinged it, and I think it was found somewhere around her body. I'd have to. I'd have to. From what it. I from what I read today, um, they found the phone. I believe under her body. Under her body. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> that's bad. I didn't know that. So it's almost like anything that I've read or watched. It seems like whoever killed her, you know, allegedly killed her, um, didn't know about the phone at all. Or this could be, you know, part of yeah. Because if they to set somebody up, if they didn't know about the phone, they wouldn't have found the phone. Right, exactly. On July seventeenth, police distributed a composite sketch of someone sought as a person of prime interest in the murders. The sketch was apparently created from eyewitness accounts of a hiker on the Delphi Historic Trails the day the girls vanished. On April twenty second of two thousand nineteen, Indiana State Police announced a new direction in the case and released a new sketch of the suspect while urging the public to look at the sketch, listen to the audio, watch how the man walks on the bridge, and send tips to the tip line email. Investigators stated they had reason to believe that the suspect might be hiding in plain sight and was almost certainly familiar with the Delphi area from living there, working there, and for other reasons. An additional plea was made for help in identifying the driver of a vehicle left abandoned off the Hoosier Heartland Highway in Delphi at the former child services office between noon and 5 p.m. on the day of the murders. On July 23, 2019, a suspect who had been wa- wanted for the kidnapping and rape in Tippecanoe County was named as one of the multiple suspects being investigated for the Williams and German murders, according to Carroll County Sheriff Toby. Tobe. Oh, We're just going to say Lazenby. Lazenby. Yes, Lazenby. The suspect had died by suicide the previous month. On April 27, 2021, Indiana State Police detectives named another suspect as a new person of interest in the Delphi murders. So, apparently the guy who shot and killed himself, the suspect that they thought that they had, um, he was wanted in another county for rape and something else for a 26-year-old girl who pulled into his driveway who had a flat tire. That sounds like some Stephen Avery shit. Yeah, yeah his name know. was Paul Etter. Yeah, in typical um, New County. Yeah, yeah he was, he was 55. Suspects. And he was in a five-hour standoff with police in Boone County, Indiana. And that, the Toby Lezenby or Lezenby confirmed. Did it show what that guy looked like? It was Toby, but they said it's it in the, It's Tobe. Okay, yeah. well, Tobe, the investigator for the... Living I Abby were, case. I thought you were he's joking the sh- when you no, told he's the her sheriff. That. He's the sheriff in Carroll County. Yeah. Toad well, he confirmed him. that this guy was also among many Did others. They, a yeah, pretty much uh, the police were telling the citizens, like, it, it's a town of 3,000 people, and he's like, this. he could be living amongst us, like, pl- right. in plain sight. Somebody has to have had seen this guy. Somebody knows this guy. Right, like that—that's a familiar face in a town of, like, I, we compare it to Jonesboro. Like, we know everybody. Right. Like, we know everybody. Do you guys think maybe that like, them trying to, to use that guy as a suspect was just maybe trying to just make somebody to like calm people's nerves? Maybe. <sighs> We're gonna get into just... some really eerie things about this stuff, and I'll come back to that question because. That's definitely a question that's warranted. Yeah, definitely. And again, I will say this. Not everything has 
they've done a piss poor job with releasing information. Yeah, for like sure. Like you want the public to help you find someone, but you're not giving, giving them anything. Them anything at all. Yeah, and the gaps in time between things being released too is like I think the, you're the just, biggest fault. Yeah, you're just it, it's bad. Yeah, for sure. On October 26, 2022, Richard Allen was taken into custody and appeared in court on October 28th. On October 31st, 2022, Indiana State Police announced that the suspect had been charged with two counts of murder in the case. He has pled not guilty. His trial, originally scheduled to start March 20th, 2023, has been postponed until later in the year at the request of the suspect's defense team. Two public defenders have appointed to represent the suspect. On November 29, 2022, Judge Francis Gull issued an order to unseal the probable cause affidavit that led to the suspect's arrest. According to the redacted document, video footage recovered from German's phone showed one of the victims mentioning gun as a man wearing a dark jacket and jeans approached them and ordered them to go down the hill. Investigators believe that Allen is the man seen in the video. Investigators also found a 40 caliber unspent round less than two feet from one of the victim's bodies. But between the two victims, it was later determined that the round came from a gun owned by the suspect. A witness said she saw a man walking away from the bridge wearing a blue collared jacket and blue jeans and was muddy and bloody. Another witness and a tip mentioned that the car was parked oddly and appeared to be parked in a way as if to hide the license plate. Investigators said the description of the vehicle matched a vehicle that Richard owned in 2017. Locals call Richard a, no a normal guy and say nothing was out of the ordinary about him. So the audio that was released where he says uh, down the hill, like everybody uh, knows it now as guys down the hill. Yeah. Um, I think I was talking to you about this earlier. Yeah. Like if you listen to the audio closely where it says guys down the hill, they released the, those two audio separately, but they're assumed they're making it seem like he says guys down the hill all together. All together. But a lot of speculation is it's not, if you listen to it, it doesn't sound like it's together. It's like, yeah, it sounds it's, like it's slipped. It sounds like it's slipped. Yeah. Uh, the video I watched today with the interview room, they had, I believe it was the interview room, they had said that guys came after Down the Hill. Down the Hill, in exactly. A separate, in a separate recording. Exactly. But they're making it believe, making you believe that it says guys down, down the, the hill. Like they're mm -hmm. talking directly yeah. to the girls. So we'll get to the... We'll get to the other stuff later, but that's just something to note. Like, Key it's, point there. It's something that we go back to the the co the police and the you know the law enforcement just painting a picture for everybody, mm -hmm. not releasing everything. According to a probable cause affidavit, Allen was interviewed by the police in 2017 and said he was on the trail that afternoon for around two hours. The document also said that a subsequent interview in October of 2022. Allen told authorities that he had worn jeans and a black or blue jacket, end quote, that day and had gone to the bridge to watch fish, end quote. On December 2nd, 2022, Judge Gull issued a gag order until January of 2023. Richard Allen's defense attorneys argued in a motion to move the trial out of Carroll County based on concerns about juror bias due to what attorneys described as the extensive media attention and the highly publicized nature of the case in the local area. Allen has been held at the Westfield Correction Correctional Facility, which is a maximum security prison, as he awaits trial. Allen's counsel says that the facility does not routinely house offenders awaiting trial. According to the newly unsealed documents, Allen allegedly confessed to killing the girls in a phone call to his wife on April 3rd of 2023. On April 3rd, 2023, Richard Allen made a phone call to his wife, Kathy Allen. In that phone call... Allen admits several times that he killed Abby and Libby. Investigators had the phone call transcribed, and the transcription confirms that Allen admits that he committed the murders of Abigail Williams and Liberty German. He admits several times within the phone call that he committed the offense as charged. His wife, Kathy Allen, ends the phone call abruptly, court documents say. 
However, his attorneys say that those documents cannot be trusted due to his mental state. Allen's attorney claimed in an emergency motion to modify safekeeping order filed on April 5, 2023, that the defendant has been detained in conditions akin to those of a prisoner of war. They claimed in the order that Allen's physical condition was deteriorate, deteriorating rapidly. Allen's attorneys also say that while being housed in the facility, Allen was wetting down paperwork he had gotten from his attorneys and eating it. He would also go days on end without sleeping and broke a tablet that he had used for text messages and phone calls. There's a lot to unpack there. So I think there's also, they did like a, and this is from um, the state side, I think they said that he um, was actually evaluated by doctors after those things take place where he was uh, wetting his paperwork down and eating it and said that like days later he actually went back to acting completely normal so this is kind of one of my theories you know that we'll talk about later which is it's kind of weird that you know how these people just do these things that don't usually happen and then go right back to acting normal yeah i will say his physical condition is definitely mm. deteriorating it's definitely Dude yeah. looks he's lost it's a lot terrible. of very bad yeah. he yeah. looks awful yeah and, I mean, what did it say? Conditions akin to a, those of prisoner of war. Mm-hmm. Like, <sighs> I'm not going to jump ahead. I have a little bit of a theory. Uh, I, th- the I, think, information. I think your guys' theories are the same. Because I, I, I want to let you read your next part yeah. before I, think I say what I think. <laughs> but him admitting several times to his wife that he committed these murders was a bombshell. Yeah. It kind of fits with the theory that I have, though. I don't want to say whether I think he's innocent or guilty, but no one admits when they know that those phone calls are recorded. This trial is going to be fireworks. It's going to be, it's going to be like we've already done Casey Anthony. It's going to be Casey Anthony esque. Like, there's going to be so much shit. I'm not really like up on like (laughs) the, the laws for like court case or trials in indiana do they do they like allow media in the courtroom and stuff like not florida like florida does? okay i don't yeah, think they florida do like florida like, you might, like you're watching a tv show you yeah watch it so i don't know we'll see though you're gonna hear all about it here soon but his wife you know ends the call abruptly like she's like oh my god my husband's admitting to this all right yeah, it, not it's not a good that was not a good day for the defense i'll just say that so Another crazy thing about this whole situation with his wife, um, with these phone calls, this is something that I actually, I seen on a video today, uh, I can't remember what the guy was like an expert on or what he had to do with, but he talked about how like in these phone calls, no one ever, it's like a statistic that it's a very small percentage of people ever just come out and admit that they've committed a murder on a recorded phone call. Yeah, you know you're on a recorded line because I'm pretty sure it says it like as you're going up to make the phone call in big, yeah. big ass fucking letters. Right, yeah, and that's kind of like I feel like if you're in prison or in jail, like that's probably like common sense. Who doesn't it. know? Yeah, right, they check right, your right. mail, they listen yeah. to your phone calls, right. they do it all. But um, also with his wife, um, shortly thereafter, I believe when he was arrested, she went on to either both their Facebooks or just uh, his Facebook and uh, erased any picture that he had the jacket that he was wearing in the in the actual photo, mm-hmm. in the alleged photo. That I think the blue, locals so. were talking a lot about that, too, that she had went on and deleted a bunch of stuff. Yeah, so, like, anything that he had, mm-hmm. any of those clothes in, he deleted, or she deleted all of it. So, kind of another crazy thing, you know, twist and turn there for that, that part. Just another note for the prosecution. Yeah, exactly. The attorney representing Richard Allen, who is the only suspect in custody, has made a chilling claim stating Abby Williams and Libby German were allegedly sacrificed in a bloody ritual by individuals associated with a pagan religion and who are believed to be white nationalists. I think they said it was like Odinism. Odinism, yeah. Yeah, It's Odinism. Odinites. The unsettling revelations come from excerpts taken recently released court from recently released court documents filed by Allen's attorneys and reported by TV station WLFI. The court documents also shed light on disturbing aspects of the crime scene. According to the filing, sticks were arranged on the girls' bodies, and a letter was pointed on a nearby tree in blood. I think it was the letter F. Yeah. If I I remember right. I think it was Libby's blood. Yeah. The girls were, I think they were stripped down, is what the document said, which is, so here's my thing. If... 
I don't want to speculate, but if if the girls are stripped down, you automatically your mind goes to sexual assault. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, wouldn't there be DNA evidence? Yeah, mm-hmm. right. I yeah. thought they at one point did have DNA evidence. That's what. That was like something that they said a long time ago. That would be like sheriff said that, but they never really came out and like. I think the big thing about Richard Allen was the bullet. It was. I don't think it was DNA. It might have been DNA evidence. And they also took like so. What's the cause of death has been determined (coughs) that they were killed by some sharp object. So like that's one of like when they went and uh, searched his house, they took a lot of uh, knives out of his house. They took guns to obviously test to see if the bullet matched the guns, whatever. But they weren't killed by a gun, so yeah. it's kind of the, the shelling was like clean shelling, and it actually came out that they were killed by. They're very vague. Yeah, the, like yeah. I'm sure Which in the next been few the whole months. Time, yeah. I'm sure in the next few months, especially with the trial, because the trial, the, everything will be released. Mm-hmm. We'll find out how it was, and they they and said it was they were killed by a sharp object. And this whole theory of like. Uh, the Odinites is like within what, like the last couple weeks or something like that. Like the last week. Yeah, like that's the last why. Week, that's so. why. Like I didn't. It's crazy. I didn't you. choose this episode because of that. Yeah. Like, p- she said something about it. My brother said something and about it. That's so too. weird because it's like perfect time. Like we. I mean, obviously, you know, tragic event, but like we didn't even know about this stuff. Yeah, it's just. It a, just it's a straight coincidence. Right this was yeah. one of the episodes we had prepared ready to go right Mm -hmm. you know and obviously as more things come out about this case we'll probably come back to it yeah definitely. like especially maybe in like preludes or something like that yeah because i mean the trial is not until the beginning of next year i believe january they select i think a jury selection set for january 8th which that's going to be crazy because i think the defense wants the trial to take place out of that county yeah because yeah i think they've already like multiple times tried to get it moved already. they don't want any bias yeah. being a small town it's like national now grab though. yeah grab your forks and pitch yeah, everyone knows oh, about yeah. it yeah. they're yeah. all in yeah, they're gonna be ready to burn that dude at the stake mm-hmm. yeah if it's in delphi so yeah getting back on the according to the filing these sticks were arranged on the girls bodies and a letter was pointed in the nearby tree and blood i think they said it was libby's blood it was the letter f while the documents identify four individuals as suspects, that's key, none of them have been arrested or charged in connection with the case. The, the defense attorneys filed these documents in an attempt to have a key piece of evidence thrown out, claiming that a search of the suspect's home was unconstitutional. This piece of evidence is a firearm bel- belonging to the suspect, which matches a shell casing found at the murder scene. That's what we just talked about. Right. Mm-hmm. So the defense has the defense says there's four like the documents there's four suspects. Detectives previously obtained information that connected two groups of men who practice Odinism to the murders, one in or near Delphi and another that lived in Rushville. Writing on the court documents, defense attorneys stated that the letter regarding the possible connection between the killings and the group practicing Odinism in Rushville was withheld by the prosecution. The attorneys accused prosecutors as well as multiple law enforcement officers from hiding information about the Odinist connection to the murders the documents revealed. Jury selection is set for January 8th, 2024, and the trial is expected to last a few weeks. Okay, so if we unwrap, start unwrapping all of the defense right here, let's... um I don't want to sit here and say that the defense is pulling a. I, I hate going back to the casing if anything, but it's just like a. It's like a. What do you call it? Like a legend, like like a map. It's like I don't want to say they're pulling a Jose Baez, but they're throwing some shit up right now. But at the same time, you think of a small town. Okay, you think of a town of three thousand people. Their police force can't be that big, right? All right. And you walk up on a murder scene, and you see something out of a horror movie. Like Blair Witch, like a sacrifice, they are not knowing what to do. Yeah, mm-hmm. like you, obviously not something that they've prepared for, or had to deal with too many times. Uh, absolutely not. I think they. I think I heard an interview with the firefighter saying like they had to like walk away from the scene several times because they couldn't handle it emotionally. Yeah, like it, it, it fucked them up really. Well, yeah, bad. and being such a small town, it's like they probably have seen <coughs> these girls and know family members like right off the bat. So like. 
this hit everybody in the chest and we're yeah. probably tough to deal with in general. And this and this isn't a theory by the defense. Like these runes and stuff, like the letter F, the blood, all that, that was real. Like and for one person to do all of this, you you'd be out there for a while. Mm -hmm. yeah. A while. Which is like so weird because all the people that searched in that area right there, I mean they literally I think watching the the down the hill uh that was on hln like they literally had people from uh, a close county like come up the the creek from the yeah. opposite way yeah. like how like, it's almost crazy that they didn't find it the, the night that it happened like it, it almost like leads me to think sometimes that they might even not have been there at that point and they brought them back to set up the the, yeah. the, the ritual type stuff, if that's really what happened. So we're going to get into some theories. Today, my wife did some researching along with Tiffany, and I told Garrett about it, and it kind of like, she texted me while I was at the grocery store. I was like, there's no shot that that's real. And sure, the fuck enough. So I'll let you go ahead and tell him. So I'm not going to go know. into my theory just yet, but um, Abby had a boyfriend named Logan, and Logan's dad was named Brad Holder, who was allegedly a part of the white nationalist group, an Odinist. Um, so I'm going to read just a part of the court document. Um, it says that on April 12th, 2017, trooper Joseph Ryan Winters received a phone call from a man in Georgia named Ryan Boucher, who had discovered disturbing images on Brad Holder's social media account. Having somehow learned that Holder's son, Logan, had dated Abby Williams, Mr. Boucher began reviewing um, Holder's social media history. One of the images that Boucher viewed on Holder's social media account was an image of two women either dead or posed as if they were dead on the ground in what appeared to be a forest. Both women had tree limbs and sticks arranged around their bodies. One of the women had her arms stretched out above her head, similar to the way that Libby's arm was stretched above her head. Both women were clothed, and the stick and tree branch formations on these girls was different than the stick and tree branch formations on Abby and Libby, but otherwise it bore a very eerie similarity to the murder scene in Delphi. Yeah. Like, that's insane. This was before any of this stuff was ever released to the public right. as well, so... The dude had that on his Facebook, like pictures yeah. of two yeah. girls playing dead with the runes. So this was this was her boyfriend's dad, dad yeah. that had that posted on yeah. his Facebook. He was cleared within thirty days of being a suspect. Which within is thirty crazy. days. Yeah, but that. if you think about it, this is part of my theory. What if he was taking Logan to meet the girls? He could have very well known that they were gonna be there, right time, right place, right. if he's part of this group. It just gets you thinking. I just think that's too much of a coincidence. Like that's just like a th that's that's too much of a coincidence. I tried to I tried to dive in and and really try to figure out like what um, what it symbolized, like why their bodies were arranged in the way that they were. But Eric is exactly right. I watched a a show that was on Court TV where they talked about it, and they actually they didn't show they didn't have like a it was like a not a dramatization. It was like an, it was like an animation. I see. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. So okay. they just showed they were almost like just cartoon figures, and they showed how they were laid, and that's exactly how they were. But the, the sticks, I'm not sure. Like if they were like were to, like symbols that had something to do runes, with those. yeah, yeah like runes. Odinism. But then like I guess one of them were arranged where to look like like devil horns or like uh, antlers, which are usually you know have to do with like satanic stuff or the Odinism type thing. But um, I was trying to remember what the F stood for because they did actually talk about that. But it's crazy that this guy had this stuff on his computer, and then it's it's like like Erica said, eerily similar, bro. Like exactly what was in the pictures. Yeah. yeah so let's go back to uh, Richard Allen in jail. You know, let's go back to that theory. Mm -hmm. You know, what did you say? It was like ninety nine percent. Nobody ever admits. Yeah, nobody ever admits like when they've murdered somebody. It's like a it's like a statistic. Like this guy talked about that was on the court TV thing. Like where nobody like this just doesn't happen. And it it, it makes me think. Which I've done a lot of. I've not really done a lot of my own like um, look into it, but like. Uh, like the MK Ultra stuff, where they they actually um, the mind well, control like shit. mind control people, like they did it in the with like Manson and them, like that stuff's all linked to like them mind controlling them with like acid and other drugs, and it's like it kind of makes you look at it in that light, my, me anyways, because 
Like, back then, they literally did this to this guy, and this was all through, like, law enforcement, the FBI, the FBI or the CIA. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was the CIA, but, like, they literally, like, um, get these people whacked out on drugs, and then they can plant, like, false memories in their head, and it kind of kind of shows, like, it's a similarity, like, where, like, if they were doing this to this guy, like, for reasons why he's acting crazy in jail, eating paper, and then days later acting normal, you know what I mean? Getting him, manipulating him to do these things that he wasn't really trying to do. Mm -hmm. And allegedly, several of the correction officers at this prison are are uh, Odinist. Yeah, Odinist, mm -hmm. and so also we're like... Uh, so you can look at that two different ways. Trying either, to manipulate either they can mm -hmm. be just... Yeah, yeah, they're just, like... Telling this him, dude like torturing like, him. This is yeah, they said him. they've been torturing him. Like mm -hmm. the guards there have been torturing him, and it could very. Well I'm not be. proclaiming this man's innocence because he very yeah. well could have had something to do with it, not but it just. Mm -hmm. No, but there's something to said sense. about there's something to be said about these documents that were released. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like there's a like th there's a reason why these documents were released. It was a hundred and thirty page documents. Yeah. Like obviously. It's public information now, so you guys can go read all of it. Mm -hmm. and I think this is the defense defense's document. Yeah, it's all mm -hmm. the defense yeah. documents. But a lot of that stuff is true. Mm -hmm. Like they're saying, like they hid. There were several things that the prosecution and the investigators never turned over to the defense. It was all withheld too. Mm -hmm. it, there's also like you sent me something that was highlighted, and I can't remember what it was. I'll give you a second to pull that up. I think it was pretty much something that was saying the prosecu the prosecution is hiding video evidence hmm. proving Richard Allen's innocence. I'll let you read Not it. only did the prosecution withhold that letter from the defense, but law enforcement also withheld several other exculpatory pieces of evidence, including an 85-page compla compilation of reports by Click prepared in 2019 and several videos containing statements that support the defense's theory of Richard Allen's innocence. Yeah. Yeah. Then, so. That kind of just takes me back to my, like, the Manson stuff. Like, when you have somebody that wants to be a part of something, they could also be the scapegoat in the fall. You mm, know? Yeah. And that's that's kind of what I'm thinking is, like, you know, these guys had this stuff all set up, and he very well could have had something to do with it. But at the end of the day, thinks he has, you know, wanting to be a part of something, thinking he has a bigger role than he actually does, and really just being the fall guy for this whole situation. Yeah, I was just about to say, you know, maybe Richard Allen did do it. Yeah. But I'm going to go as far as saying he didn't do it alone. Yeah. Like yeah. there, there it was. Well, he's That's five foot four. Yeah, and two girls that are That's probably me. close to his height. Yeah. And they were fourteen. A, creek, a three I foot mean, yeah. deep creek river. Probably could have got it. away from him pretty easy if they yeah. wanted to. Yeah. They both they had phones. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. So over the next few months, we're going to be keeping an eye on this. We'll post updates. We'll come out with content with updates. Definitely. Um, I'll be looking forward to the trial because I, I'm I'm really ready to see what the state actually has because. Anything that I've read or watched, you know, YouTube, the court TV stuff, it doesn't seem like they have a very strong case at all. No. They better they better come with evidence. Didn't didn't Richard work at CVS and I'm like not he sure. printed all the pictures off for them for free for the funeral and stuff? What? I, I never heard something that. about That's CVS, crazy. but I don't know. Yeah, I'm That's pretty sure. Yeah. 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 That's wild. That's kind of insane. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, maybe to think that he was the one that there. maybe yeah. He was guilty, yeah. felt guilty, so he printed all the pictures for free oh, at wow. CVS that they used for the girls' funerals. Yeah. So. Okay. so let us know what you guys think. Definitely. I think that's all we got for today. Um, next week, we have Jeffrey Dahmer. Yes, sir. Spooky month. Week begins. one of spooky We got to get the set ready, bro. So, like, we gotta, yeah, I'm going to go to we're gonna, we're like gonna talk Dollar about Tree or something. <laughs> 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 but all right. Like yeah. I said, we'll keep you guys updated. Follow all the socials. Anything else you guys got? Uh, we got tit hats coming soon. Just T I T hats. Tap in Tiffany hats Tap coming in. soon. Merch coming very soon. Very, very soon. soon. Mrs. Kaka will be on top of that. Let's go. <laughs> Mr. Barrow has to order me some new equipment. All right. Yeah. All of our kids are going crazy. Right. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See ya. See ya.